Okay. All right. Today I have my friend Jen, who hey. I actually haven't seen in a long time. We should have done one of these for like 20 minutes prior and then gone into the podcast, but I didn't really think about that. So that's okay. I'm flexible. It's all good. And she is calling in from Ventura, California. I assume that's where you're at right now. <laughs> yes, that is accurate. <laughs> I miss living out there. It's uh, too hot. It's too hot right now. What? No, it's perfect. What? Are you, you know in me. Santa Ana's right now? No, 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 no. It's just got the heat. So like it was 89, 90 degrees and that for me, it's too hot, but people love it. Oh, so that's just me. Bad. Yeah. I'm a <laughs> 75, 80 person. So. Exactly. Yes. Well, yeah. um, so Jen, I'm going to read your title that you sent me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Her title is associate marriage and family therapist and intro. Can it also include... <laughs> Specializations in grief and loss. Oh, shoot. I just totally messed that up. Specializing yeah, in right. grief, loss, anxiety, <laughs> depression, LGBTQ, and individual family, couples, and adolescents. So basically, you kind of work with everybody, right? Yes. I, I am pretty much, um, I specialize in grief and loss. That's why I highlight that. Most everything I feel like is grounded in grief and loss, whether it's trauma or actually true loss of a loved one or a job relationship, you name it it kind of ties together. So grief and loss is, is a, a primary focus for me. Uh, and then I work with a lot of different populations, like you mentioned. Yeah. Wow. And how long have you been doing that? Like, I know professionally you've been doing that for three years, four years. Oh no, you cut out again. Shoot. Three years. Okay. Four years. Am I frozen? No, you're good now. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I'm not frozen, but how long, how long have you, be, because you've been a counselor my, the entire time I've known you. <laughs> Not maybe officially, officially, right. but you've always been very counselor-ish. Right, right. So I knew that this was my path. I've actually been in the role professionally since 2017, technically, through my um, grad school education. We do a year of practicum. And then now my associate status means that I'm earning, earning my hours toward licensure, which means after my um, 3,000 hours, which I'm about 300 hours short of 3,000, so I'm almost there. Oh, wow. And then I can take the state licensure test to become licensed and then be able to open my own private practice, which is my goal. So I'm right there at the cusp. I'm very excited. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Excited. I love this work. Yeah. 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 So what have you been kind of, I know you have been using Zoom and you've been talking to people and you've been counseling people via online. Yeah. Um, we're just living in a really weird time right now, which is, it is. why I wanted to have you on because... I've kind of, um, well, being that the entire project that I do is based on one-on-one, -on -one, and when yes. that got taken away, I was like, okay, there has to be other ways that I can do this, and obviously, I probably should have been connecting for the podcast like this already, <laughs> you <know>. but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think you hit your nail, the nail on the head. We This is uncharted territory. This is all very new for everyone. And the telehealth platform has been around um, the for a while, uh, but the criteria and the protocols for it have changed because of the need right now. And so there's a lot more lax um, protocols and guidelines around telehealth just so that we can, as mental health professionals, we can be available to the populations, um, which is so needed right now, as you know. Yeah. And so... Um, um, with that, I'm excited that we can, as an associate and a trainees, they can now do telehealth before it was only licensed uh, mental health professionals that were able to do that. There are still other restrictions, like you have to be within the same state in order to do that. You can't be in California and Texas, for example. Um, so there's you other can't things. give me some uh, mental health stuff going on right now. <laughs> as a I'm friend. In, I'm in California too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So there's some other criteria though that we have to make sure if we're not licensed yet that we still have to adhere to. But the good news is they've really relax that so we can just be available for the, the folks that need it right now. Um, and I think right now it's been, as I've been working with clients for now about six weeks-ish about mm -hmm. that, um, is the level of anxiety, the uncertainty, um, the not knowing, just sitting in that space of kind of feeling stuck a lot of the time. Um, so that's kind of a theme that's been happening um, yeah. across the board. And right now I have a good bit of 
um, adolescents and teens, uh, folks in high school, and all of those pieces of now transitioning home to do um, their schooling at home, and they're missing their friends and their regular connections. And then I do a lot with um, hospice and elderly populations where they're isolated and they live alone already, and now they're further isolation because of these protocols that are there. So there's a unique sense of care that's happening and support that's required um, as mental health professionals and getting resources to people and being creative about how to plug in to um, like purpose and meaning so it doesn't feel like I, I joke you know me I have a little funny sense of humor so I joke so it doesn't feel like Groundhog Day we're, we're reliving right. over and over again like I wake up sometimes our sleep patterns are off now where right. I stay up till two or three in the morning and then I get up at 11 or 12 and now my whole day is shifted and it feels strange and people feel kind of off kilter. So we get creative about how to structure when it doesn't feel like there's a lot of structure. So that's kind right. of Right. I feel like everybody that I've talked to, that's the one, like no matter if we're in unemployment issues or we're in people are working or whatever, it doesn't really matter. It's that uncertainty of like, when are we going to go back to normal? Like right. when, which obviously the nor new normal is going to be different right. than what it was. That's never going to be the same the thing again, or right. it may take years to get there. But it's also like, you know, normally when you have, say you, you're sick or you have something happen to you, you usually have, okay, well, your time is usually like a six month recovery or like mm -hmm. a three week recovery. And this is like a, we have no idea. Right. <laughs> right. And like, even like as states begin to open, like Georgia's open where I'm at now for the most, I mean, they still have a lot of restrictions and like Missouri's opening May 4th, but just because it, everything's open doesn't mean you that should it's go. just like back to normal. It means like, <laughs> right. ooh, well now we're like terrified to go out, be amongst other people. You hear somebody cough and there's like, Fear. you're scared, but you're, you're also judgmental. Like, you know, <laughs> and it's right. like an instant thing. Like, why isn't that person wearing a mask? Like it's all, it's very, Lots of emotions, lots of emotions. Yes, and so with that, what we've been, what I've been doing with a lot of um, clients is a lot of grounding, breathing, relaxation, things that we do have control of because often what I hear is frustration, resentment about lack of control. Mm -hmm. And then what do we do with that? What do we do with those, um, the, the, the scarier emotions, the ones that people are afraid of, like the anger and the resentment and those kinds of things. So redirecting a little bit of uh, relaxation and there's a lot of tools. I can provide offline some of the strategies and things if you like, and I don't know how you would share it, but um, I can provide that for you to do. And, and that tends to help because we talk about a window of tolerance. And right now, a window of tolerance it depends and it varies per person. For example, if you're already an anxious person naturally, this is really going to shoot you out of window of tolerance for the most part a lot of the time. And so we need to regulate you. And so regulation happens about self-soothing, relaxation, breathing techniques, meditation, going for a walk, exercise, um, sometimes, you know, water, things like that, anything that's calming and each person is unique in what works. So we do an exploration around um, those strategies. I, I call it building a toolbox of kind of um, uh, things that you can pull from and use. And if one thing works one time, great. And if it doesn't another, then we pull another tool out and we, we use that. And also what, what I've been talking about is setting an intention for a day, a week and chunking down time. So it doesn't feel like an overwhelming unknown tunnel of never ending, uh, you know, uh, like a, a final date, like you were saying, there's no end date, right? And so, so let's chunk that back so it doesn't feel like forever or unknown, right? And so we look at that and say, so I'll ask a client, like for you, if I were to say, Annette, for the next week, what would be a focus or a theme that you'd like to look at? What would be that, something like that for you? Probably a routine. Okay. So I'm not the, on any type of routine. And then when I get on one, then all of a sudden I'm like sleeping an entire day. Exactly. And then the next day I'm like super productive and like, right. Yeah. It's all over the place. Right. Yeah. And so generally speaking, when we have more structure, we do a little bit better, but I also want to highlight if we have high expectations of ourselves right now, we can get ourselves into trouble. So I, I, I balance that out with a lot of self-compassion. So some people say, I look at my day and I said, 
and they look at themselves and say, man, I wasted my day. Man, I should have done all these things I could have done. And the truth is we are taking care of ourselves because whether we can feel it or not, that anxiety is living and breathing really are surrounding us at every moment. Mm -hmm. And so if our body, our minds, our hearts are asking to rest, do so. Like use your intuition. And I call it kind of crawling in the cave, right? So if you're feeling like you want to, you know, be in your bed all day and kind of feel like low, very normal and that's okay. And what I say is it's great to visit there, but we just don't want to set up camp, right? We don't want to be there for a week. It's a day or, or even a few hours. You can say, this is my time to rest, rest my heart, rest my mind, my body, all of those things. Um, so it's a, it's a balance between structure and self-compassion is kind of what I'm looking at is kind right. of the pendulum. So. I've noticed too, like, and it depends on like the first two weeks we're like, Oh, I'm going to get so much done. And I'm going <laughs> to clean out my drawers and I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that. And like, then it's like, or I'm going to binge watch Netflix. Right, right, <laughs> and right. I like the people that are putting out quotes, like you don't have to learn a new language or learn mm -hmm. something. To we, you can, that's awesome. If you want to lose or use your downtime to, uh, I don't know who it was that discovered the gravity. Oh, who I should know this <laughs> during like the plague or whatever. What? <laughs> the plague, the, the Black Plague. It was. Uh, oh, I heard gravity. I know that was another yeah, era. The, okay. <laughs> we'll just like ignore that fact Newton, that I can't remember. Newton, what it where the apple dropped on his it head. It might have been Newton and discovered how gravity works or something like that during the plague. Anyway, some people have done some really phenomenal things, and other people have learned like how to eat a massive amount of popcorn and binge watch every show that they've ever had. And yes. both of those are okay. That's fine. Like, you Absolutely. don't have to build an art. Absolutely. And I think that's the thing I've been talking generally with clients and I would say something like, I think that at the end of the day, when you reflect back in this time, you'd, we would try to minimize regret. Okay. And so whatever that looks like for you. And that's why I say everyone is different, just like you're saying. So maybe just surviving and getting out of bed and taking a shower is, is what someone can do. Right. Right. Because it's overwhelming right now for them, especially this is what I think about those, those folks that are still working, whether they're in a grocery store or they're part of the medical um, staff or something like that, 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 that zero expectations for themselves because they're basically in survival mode. They're overloaded. They're totally overwhelmed. And so whatever self-care that looks like, whether it's sitting in front of the TV all day or eating a boatload of popcorn, like you were saying, mm -hmm. that's okay. But we want to balance that out though, to make sure that we don't fall into a trap of, of being in that rut or that groundhog experience, that gro groundhog day experience. We just want to mix it up a little bit so that we say, feel like you don't have to do anything, but also have it set an intention. So right. they feel like, like a direction. So you don't feel like you're flailing and kind of just existing. One right. of the concepts that we looked at was if, if you sit passively and let life kind of happen to you versus being more active and saying, these are the things I'd like to do or not do or whatever, but you feel like the posturing in it feels different, right? So when you look at in your life and say, you know, this is happening to me. The truth is we do have more power in our day. We may feel limited because of our surroundings. We're not able to go out regularly, but we do have to this, the, the decision to do certain things for ourselves every day. We do have some freedoms within the li limitations. So that's right. kind of the framework or the reframe that I look at for some clients when they're feeling overwhelmed. Yeah. And I'm really hoping that, um, well, like how you're doing the online and remote stuff. I hope that continues later because even after, after this um, calms down, or I don't know the words exactly to say for it, but after it calms down and we go back to what's normal or normalcy, um, I hope mental health is still a big factor because a lot of people right now are in the flight or fight, yeah, flight or fight yeah. mode. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And they won't know that they just went through a massive trauma, like people working in healthcare, it's their job yes. they're doing and they're going yeah. and they just, they're having to do yeah. it and it won't affect them until they get that break and they get that calm. And then at that time, it's like, man, I really hope that everybody is kind and, and open for mental health then too, because mm -hmm. that's going to be a whole different, um, yes. Wave. And, I, and I think you're describing one thing and, and, and initially you said they're in that fight or flight. So the 
central nervous system, it's our primal response, right? Even animals, we, they have it, fight, flight, or freeze, right? And that's our brain and it's primal uh, neurological response and then the body response, right? And what you're describing is kind of PTSD-like symptoms where they are in it and they're survival mode and there's gonna be symptoms later down the road. Once they kind of, their body starts to calm, the central nervous system starts to kind of regulate again more consistently. Um, so they'll, they'll may have sleep disturbances, appetite disturbances, um, feeling more anxious, depressed, all of these. Um, uh, there's also startled response with loud noises and things like that. So there could be a wide range of symptoms related to the aftermath, what you're talking about. And certainly, yes, I would love to be able to continue. And we as clinicians, as we've been going through our consultations and our supervisions, that we are talking about that. We hope that this is more available because this has been very convenient for especially teens and especially folks that tend to isolate anyway who are already suffering with depression who can barely get themselves out of bed how are they going to drive themselves to a session if they're not feeling the motivation you know that kind of thing right. so they may feel more comfortable in their own space to do um, sessions there are limitations though and I'm finding um, um, I do I am trained in a modality called the EMDR which is focused on trauma and some things like that and so doing EMDR through the screen is a bit trap you know it's not the same as if we're in person person and that can be an effective modality so we're getting creative on how we can still continue the most effective treatment and care for the client and and sometimes the the telehealth is limiting but i agree i think this is an amazing tool to be able to use as a clinician always and i hope that we continue um, to offer this in a more um, relaxed uh, meaning availability, I would hope that the, the barrier between states and even countries might be able to uh, be more re reduced to for the associates and trainees, not just for licensed mental health uh, folks with the right training, let me just say. Right. We do have to go through training. So I did, in the beginning of this quarantine, I did complete, I think it's a 12-hour um, training to make sure that I was compliant, that I understood the, you know, the requirements and the guidelines and all of those safety precautions and risks. Because the other piece is, if we don't know where the client is and they have an emergency such as their self-harm or harm to someone else, how are we gonna report that? How are we gonna get them safe? Because I have no idea where you are. So we need to make sure that we have certain protocols where we capture their location, and capture that they can be in a space where it's confident and they have their privacy protected. So we just need to make sure there's some things that are in place before we start those kind of telehealth stuff. Right. Now, as a person who is constantly helping other people, how are you helping yourself during this time? <laughs> oh, you're so cute. <laughs> you're, like, oh, you're okay. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, we were just talking about this today. I did a supervision for EMDR this morning, and she asked the same question. She was saying, how are you guys doing? How are you taking care of yourself? And the, the tr truth is, it's still a balance. Um, uh, it requires attention and energy from, from the clinician. And sometimes I'm doing seven to eight hours per day of one hour sessions. So I'm doing eight hours of therapy sessions. And yes, I call it kind of residue. There's residue that tends to kind of linger, but we do our own work around um, kind of compartmentalizing or doing, it sounds a little funny, but I do rituals. For example, in between sessions, I'll go wash my hands, for example, or I'll go in the backyard, take a a few deep breaths in between so that I can be prepared and available and present for the next client. If I tend to go straight into um, session after session without that kind of ritual in between, then there's no, uh, it kind of runs together. And sometimes like, I can feel it in my body where I'm like, okay, I'm not fully present. So I need to do something to shift and to make sure I'm present. So it's an act of, um, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, ritual or activities that keep me uh, available and present and it's something that is hard because I know for example yesterday I knew I was done like for the week I couldn't do anymore and if one more person asked me to do something you know to be available for them and I know that that's my limit and if I can really attune to that okay then that means self-care time and I think you know me well enough. I do my bath still every night, right? I love my bath. So I, water for me is really important, like cleansing, it's metaphor, right? It's kind of renewing, rebirth, whatever you want to call it. You can get kind of woo-woo with it. I love it. 
Um, and then there are other things like, I, you know, I have a lot of pets, so spending time with my kids, my pets, something that, that the, the things that spark joy, right? The things that kind of fill you up. That's really important. Am I doing that wonderfully right now? No, because I'm in the midst experiencing this with everyone too. Right. So I have my own anxieties and my own limitations. So I've been walking outside, moving your body is really, really um, important. Um, and then just being grounded. So nature right now is really, really important. And when I go out, I do, it's kind of a, what do you call it? Popular phrase right now is that mindfulness, right? But it's important. Mindfulness is when you're out, you're, you're looking at the environment with all of your senses. And that really helps ground you and to fill you up again. It brings you present. You're not in the past. You're not in the future. You're just right where you need to be. So it's what, what do the, the trees sound like around you? What do the birds sound like around you? You hear people in the other backyards around you. What do you, what do you, what do you smell? That kind of thing. So you really just take in all the sensory information and really experience that fully. And that can, these little moments can really help fill you up, especially within this limited, limited experience. We can't go out, for example, and sit at the beach right now, which I used to love to do, or go walk at the beach. And I don't do that. I can't go to my park and go on a hike right now, right? those things but I can walk on my neighborhood I can do certain things so again being creative with what we have available to us and utilize them the best we can for sure but that's a good question yeah it's been really um like as much as we can focus on the negative things of what we can't do there are a ton of things that we can do and there's mm -hmm. also a ton of things that I think it's it's not like I don't want to say it's not bad because it, I mean obviously I'm it, I'm gonna be honest it sucks <laughs> right it's hard for a lot of people yeah but there's a lot of good that has come out of this too of like people's schedules have calmed down they're not rushed as much like yeah. I've talked to my family more in the last three months than I've talked to in years yes um I mean not in person and that part stinks and I was like I just noticed because like human touch to me I'm not mm -hmm. I'm a hugger but I'm like. I have to kind of know you and then sometimes like touch is weird not in a bad way but like yeah, no i know what you mean <laughs> but i never noticed how much i miss it like right. until i was like wow i've literally gone three months without touching another yes. human being whether yes. it's a high five or a hug or yes. anything and i was like that's kind of sad <laughs> it is and a lot of these awarenesses are coming forward like you're saying and these small things that we used to be so available to us are not there and so some of the so i, I would call these resources so you will you do something with me really quick around physical touch uh, what are you oh, around physical touch oh, you, I thought you were open, open for physical touch I, was like, yes, <laughs> yes. I, know, I know you are but I'm wondering so part of um we do some self self soothing kind of activities that are basic and I can yes it's kind of like that really? oh, okay okay so are you ready it's not like sensual like this but let me just show you I love it so when we're preparing for for example EMDR or something like that we want to make sure that the clients can self soothe themselves and this can apply this at any time for any reason, not just EMDR. So one of them is called the butterfly hug, and we can do it in two different ways, and depending on where it feels best to you. So exactly when you crisscross your arms, so you can go ahead and crisscross your arms. The first one is up by your clavicle. It's like your little bones that stick out right here. Okay, so you crisscross here, and you just gently, in a slow pace, kind of tap. Just like that, you're just self-soothing yourself. And especially if you feel really anxious or overwhelmed, you do this for a few minutes, it could feel very calming and soothing to you, okay? Some people don't like it up here. It feels like, ah, oh, I'm kind of choking myself a little bit. If that doesn't feel good to you, you can move down to the upper parts of your arms here and do the same thing. You just tap, 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 tap. I think like I like that. it up here better. Right, so that's why I want to try on a few different ones, right? Down so that's me in like I'm impatient. Or you're something. like, <laughs> yeah. Like you, like but the pace, the pace of the tapping is really important, especially if you're anxious. You tend to want to do this, right? Because you're anxious, so yeah, you want to make sure you want to make sure it's a slow pace yeah. like that. All the while, you want to focus on your breathing, just like meditation. Breathing in through the nose, really deep belly breath where you're going to push out your belly. When you're overwhelmed, you get your breath trapped up in your upper chest area. So you really have to expand your belly to fill up your lungs. You'll hold on to that for about four seconds, 
and then exhale through your mouth in a slow pace. And so all of that can be very soothing to your central nervous system, so if you're yeah. feeling. So that's a really easy one to do anytime, anywhere. Now, sometimes you're in the grocery store and you see people like, ah, you know, I'm tapping in. So sometimes you, people yeah. feel more comfortable at home doing those, but you can certainly do that. And there are other tools that I can provide too, but that's one for sure. I like that one. I. Yeah, that was really calming. Like up here, for some reason, it just feels like there's like a pressure of like yeah something. Yeah, I like that yeah. one. Yeah, so yeah. I try to do this. But kind of, but that's more frustrating. <laughs> that's more frustrating. My anxiety is going up. <laughs> I love it. That's great. So, what are some other? Um, we have about twelve minutes left on yeah. here. This is the only thing I need to change my Zoom account. So I don't want to pay for it but then i'm like wow 30 minutes because it's 40 total but then it cuts you off and i swear it only gives me like 35 minutes to talk well about. i think they've been extending it and gifting time because we yeah, did a I group and, and the, those little uh pop up huh yeah it keeps popping up and it tells me that i need to pay to upgrade oh then maybe you did it too I, many times. Not <laughs> like, thank you zoom i have i have used this for free for like three months now so right right not complaining yeah but anything like pressing or anything that you really wanted to talk about yeah I, I wrote down a few things as preparation and I think we touched um on a lot of it but um one of the things that I think would be really helpful as another tool is journaling and and a lot of people don't like writing but there is something to be said um about when we're having overwhelming thoughts or emotions we it kind of gets trapped in our brains and our bodies and we have symptoms that come up I don't know if you've felt anxiety where you start to have headaches nausea so it feels like flu you feel kind of achy and a lot of that is kind of trapped emotion. So I have a lot of, um, uh, we do body scan. And so it's called somatic uh, check-in. So we want to check in with our body and that will give good information to our emotional kind of experience. If we have these kind of trapped experience, emotional experiences, journaling, and not through, by the way, not through typing or on your phone or on your computer, a good old fashioned pen and paper is really effective. And when we write out our thoughts and how we're feeling, there's a release that can happen. So for example, if that uncertainty, we want to write about what it feels like, right? What does it feel to be in that stuckness and feel anxious of not knowing when this is going to end or what the new normal might feel like or look like or worrying about our kids going back to school too soon and they'll be ill or all of these things so we're capturing these anxieties on paper and then what we can do either with yourself or a safe um, either friend or if you yourself has a, have a clinician or therapist read that out loud and start to acknowledge it and, and label things that really does help ease the experience so we can identify it um, so that has been helpful especially around uh, the work that I do in grief and loss we do journal grief journals all the time we can use this with depression anxiety all kinds of kind of um, um, a larger experiences, emotional experiences. So I would recommend if, if that's the case, and that's something that anyone can do. And the thing that happens with people is, oh, I don't, I'm not a good writer, my grammar, my spelling. It's not about that. It's not about any of that. There's no self-judgment. It's just getting it out. It's expressing yourself, right? And then um, sometimes you can keep those journals so that you can reflect later. Sometimes people want to burn it and safely and say, oh, I just want to extinguish these emotions, right? So there's some things that we can do with those um, journal pages. So um, I can speak more about that, but that's a great tool to be able I get to do. I'm really excited and I buy a journal or I buy something and I write in it for like two days and then I forget and then right. I go back to it and I write but I still feel it's beneficial even if I yeah. do it once in a while like versus never right. um, but yeah I'm always that type of person like I would love to be that person that wakes up every day and journals well and it doesn't have to be every day it could be once a week um if they feel compelled to do it every week so the thing that I talk about it shouldn't feel like homework mm -hmm. it shouldn't feel like oh I need to journal it's like you feel compelled to, I, I, I feel compelled to journal, right? Like I need to kind of express myself and I don't want to really word vomit on it, my friends or my family. I just kind of want to give it to the page is what I say mm -hmm. and then bring it to that safe, uh, either for yourself or with that safe partner or whatever. Um, 
yeah, so that's the, that's a good distinction because we don't want it to feel like, oh crap, I'm committed to journaling every night. Great, amongst all the other things I have to do in my life, right? No, you just feel like a failure. I'm like, well, not good at that either. <laughs> no, and it should be just yours, and it's unique. And again, no judgment around what it looks like, what it sounds like. It's literally, we're just identifying emotions and processing. I that's all. Okay. See? I know. Look, look, look. Yes. Well, I write notes. Yes, yes. <laughs> I have like, look, this is so sad. This is so sad. Well, I don't know if it's sad or not, but I have like four different like notebooks sitting next to me for, for different reasons. And a lot of it is work related, but a lot of it is also personal. So, um, but I think that's one that's really important to kind of, you can, everyone for the most part has pen and paper or something to write on or something like that. So it doesn't, you don't have to buy anything special. You don't have to have certain, you know, equipment and things like that. So that, that's definitely can be helpful. Um, I think that also, if you're going to post this, that I would um, send you, I will give you the national hotlines for like um, resourcing for um, support that they can call anytime 24 seven. If, if you need to ask and talk to anyone about, difficulties to always have that handy actually on my business card on the flip side I have not only the national hotline the local uh, Ventura County hotline but I also have the teen line too because I have a lot of clients that are teens and they're specialized to to work and talk with teens and, and young adults um, so I have that for you that if you'd like to kind of put that with this um, information I always want to arm people with resources if they're feeling isolated if they're feeling alone that they can reach out and they have resources they don't have to leave their home for that they can pick up their phone they can reach out it's always available and I think sometimes people forget that it is there right yeah yeah I'm I'm planning on releasing this on Monday so okay. yeah I'll send you that stuff a couple but yeah I'll put that in the post along with it and then also um because this this will go on to YouTube uh -huh. video of me looking so fabulous um <laughs> I don't know about that, but thanks. I just noticed too, like my steamer thing is in the background. <laughs> just like fantastic. I thought it was a ring light. No, I, like, I wish I was that fancy. No, I wish I was. But one other thing that I want to mention about this experience in quarantine and this telehealth is both the clinician, myself, and the client have been showing up more authentically. And what that means is sometimes. I'm like, crap, I, I, I got to throw in like a sweatshirt. I put my hair up in a bun and I show up for my, I would never have done that in my sessions in the office, what right? Are you wearing pants right now, Jen? I totally am wearing pants right now, I promise. But what I love is also they're showing up and they'll go, I'm in my pajamas, is that okay? And I'm like, it's perfect. Are you comfortable? Fantastic. So there's, we're putting down these defenses that we kind of present out in the world. And I love that we're just showing up for one another and, and being authentic. And I think that's been a benefit of this experience of just showing up as you are and being whatever state that is hair washed or not. I mean, some, some of my teens are like, this is what I see. I'm going to, this is going to be funny. This is wait, I have to do they're used to being on their classes online. So this is what I see is about their eyeballs and then their foreheads and that's it. And I go, I can't see your face. And then they go, oh, sorry. <laughs> right. Cause they're used to just seeing on their classrooms like that. So I love like the etiquette and kind of the, their exploration around what this feels like to be in, in a telehealth or online experience. Mm -hmm. And so um, also getting a glimpse into their bedrooms a lot of times they're in their room so i get to see their personalities in a different way it's been yeah. amazing and it's true I've been for staring at your poster behind you the whole time because i'm like oh, you like well, my birds it's a bird but i was literally just looking up um to kill a mockingbird uh -huh, yeah. uh, because my bus's name is atticus and i want to get uh -huh. a quote for it and stuff and yeah. i was just looking at stuff that basically looked just like that so that's funny yeah this is what most people see yeah <laughs> Okay. Yes, yeah, a bird. Very calming. It's very calming. Right. I'm trying to like you see my blues and everything is trying to be like you know right. calming, but the um, that red shirt it's making me angry. Is it? I'm sorry. I was trying to stand out because I just blur into the background sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, this is what I wore this morning too. So <laughs> this is what I wore yesterday. I love it. I'm, like, well, I'm gonna be doing the same thing today. I'm just wearing it again. That's right. That's right. Um, but yeah, I think that 
the authenticity and the genuineness and just showing up as you are is really important right now. It's to, to not feel like you have to put those masks on. And this has been a really um, uh, positive experience for most people, for most, not all, meaning the, the authenticity piece. I love that part. I love that people are, um, I don't want to say finally letting their hair down, but kind of, you know, like <laughs> it's not all. And I was talking to somebody else about this the other day because like, even on Instagram and Facebook, like I'm just kind of done with it. Cause I'm like, it's just the same stuff over and over of like what somebody's eating or what somebody's watching or what clothes. I mean, like there's Tiger just King. Of- yeah. I love it. <laughs> I know. I know. That was I, know. Great. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, that was a make you feel good about yourself type show. Uh, but I think it is kind of cool that everybody, this is like a huge, even in evener, like from millionaires to, you know, like we're not all in the same boat, obviously people are dealing with things very differently, different resources. Right. Yeah. But it's not, nobody's immune to it. Like nobody is immune to the fact that this is affecting everybody. And it's just kind of nice to see like these people who normally have, you know, everything together being like, Nope, I don't have it together. Yep. Don't have it together at all. Like, and this is me, this is me today. So about like some people are drinking, some people are, you know, Mm -hmm. trying to like, I have one friend, she gets up every day and she works out like, and she, um, does her hair and her makeup. And she goes to her office just like she would her normal day because it makes us feel good. And it's like, awesome. And I'm like, that's really cool. I'm like, I don't have that motivation to do that, but I also am not home to to do that. But I love that she does that because she's like, and I'm at work. (laughs) Right. You walk from kitchen to your office. I'm at work now. I I think it's, (laughs) it's really cool. But from everybody who's just, I don't know, there's just something really connecting going on right now too, as much as, there's a lot of just political jargon and hatred right. and all that stuff. There's a lot of, of everybody is experiencing this. And it's not just me and my friends. It's literally the entire world is experiencing this. So anybody who lives during this time, this will be something that we can connect yeah. and talk about. Or like, you know, you go to Italy and you meet somebody and be like, whoa, during, remember that? What, what, yeah, or exactly. India, or you go to Australia or you go your next door neighbor like people are starting to know their neighbors more Mm -hmm. they're starting to know like how much the essential workers are are worth what they're getting paid um i mean there's just no denying that there's some good stuff going on right now too so yeah i i was walking with emma my my daughter and she asked me a question and i was really she was i I think she's a thinker and i love that about her and she said do you think that they're going to write about this in history books i said absolutely and you're part you're living this history and and we're kind of uh, the pages are unfolding as the days go right how they're how they'll be reflected and what this time will be captured like in the history books right so i think it was really poignant for her to be aware of the the scale of this experience Mm -hmm. right and I think that was really profound for her to understand that she's living through this kind of profound moment whether it's positive negative one thing that you just um reminded me is when I when I do do the grief and loss work because a lot of this is around grief and loss where we have lost and we're grieving our old ways right there are some positives so when we have these concepts sometimes people think you can only have one experience a positive one or a negative one and the truth is it's both at the same time we can experience that low dark emotions as well as the joy and the the happy moments that exist in the darkness so remember that both can exist at the same time like you said it's frustrating to see the political stuff and all of the discord and the conflict and kind of the different differing uh, opinions about the timelines and you know when we should do things and all kinds of uh you know recommendations for treatment i'll just leave it at that (laughs) and say um both can exist right both can be um present at the same time and it doesn't have to be either or so i think it's a hard concept to think about sometimes to say it just feels heavy and i feel heavy and this is a lot at the same time we can capture moments in our day that feel light and fun and playful so that both can exist at the same time so we're creating a little bit more balanced experience yeah yeah 
definitely it, it's just going to be bizarre in like five years from now to look back and be like whoa that happened you know <laughs> like it's just, it's just gonna be crazy it is and the fact that like like she said if we're um you know it's a historical moment that mm -hmm. everybody's going to be able to look back on and everybody i hope it never happens again right. like i hope it's not something 20 years from now that this type of thing happens again like i hope it's a once in a lifetime experience sure. or what we know about the cycles through things like the viruses and things that kind of come up is that we're preparing differently right so we can tackle it differently that well, um, there's a person who's wanted a nest egg or anything like now i understand like why my grandparents who lived through the Great Depression did and like did all of their stuff. Like, wow, I'm gonna live for the moment and I, you know, whatever. And now I'm like, whoa, I'm really glad I had a good year last year. I'm like, still haven't paid my taxes, but I'm glad I had that money right. because I'm not a saver. I'm not a right. person that looks for doomsday. And now I'm like, wow, I've been out of work for two months and I haven't had a paycheck since May March 11th. Yes. You know, I'm like, that's a big. That's right. a big difference that is a learn for me of like, well, you might want to put a little bit of side just in case it never happens. Again. Right. And, and I had that perspective. Luckily, I'm in a position where I can continue to work. But if I wasn't and I was part of some, you know, the folks that say you need to stay home and not generate, I would be in a very different position right now. Are you hearing my dog? Yeah, whining? Your little puppy. Totally whining right now. She wants to go out. And I, <laughs> this happens all the time with clients. This is the other part for telehealth. Literally, my cat will start to walk across the screen. I go, oh, kitty. And so I try to like separate but it's you know it's a menagerie here so like i'm really glad that i'm at a place that has animals because it's done a lot for my mental health too i'm like oh there's goats yes. and there's dogs and there's puppies <laughs> and, um, ducks and chickens like even chickens i never thought watching chickens would be relaxing but oh they're so great i'll just sit on my um bus steps and i'll be like there's a chicken oh there he goes again i'm like what a what a life you could just yeah. walk around you got poop stuck to your butt but whatever you're just living Exactly. So do me a favor. I'm going to pop over there. I just open the door for her so she'll stop whining and I'll be right, right back. Okay. okay. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> I need to see what time I See by myself. Having a dance. This is what I'm talking about. This is real life right now. I'm telling you. I'm shocked it hasn't given me the 10 minute thing because I set the timer for 40 and now it didn't give me. It hasn't told maybe me it's me set up yet. So maybe it's me. I don't know. We could still talk. I don't care. Continue yeah, going. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. Going. Yeah. So yeah, the animal thing is is part. What is happening? This is okay. Okay. Going to be on. a DJ. No. Okay. No. no. <laughs> okay. These are like noise canceling, so I have to have one ear open and one over it. <laughs> I'm not even. Listen, I got the system. I may not look great. Well, no, these were old, and so yeah, I just I, I can't be bothered buying anything big. So you know, some of them have the streamlined, like oh, I have the new like you know headphones and stuff. No, I don't have. The ear like this. Dangle, yeah. I feel like those hurt my ears anyway. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> but the animals, <laughs> the animals thing is really important because they do they provide comfort, they provide um, distraction, and and. Uh, I don't know, just that joy when they're being silly and all, all kinds of things. So I think animals um, can be really helpful too, for sure. I know. I thought about getting a shelter dog or something like that just as a foster, but then I know that that would wreck me to give it back. So oh, I was yeah. like, uh, and I'm not in a, my apartment, I can't have animals, which kind of stinks. At some point I'll move because I really would like a dog again. Yeah, yeah. But here I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine dogs on this property. Nice. So I'm getting my dog pill. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it can, that, that can be really, really helpful. Very comforting too. So um, I'm trying to think if we hit all of it uh, on my list. Are there questions that you have there that anything? Not probably that pertain to this subject. Oh, okay. So uh, here's, here's another one that I had written down here. Um, and I don't know if we talked about it or if it's something I spoke to you about this morning, but you remember how we talked about structuring your day around feeling whatever you're up for, but also what an, the intention might be in your week or your day, and then identifying activities that are connected to the feeling of 
uh, meaning and purpose. That's really a key. And I think that some people haven't really determined what those things are that they kind of the life is their life is structured because of their responsibilities, right? You get up, you could do your job, you got to clean the dishes, do your laundry, it's, you know, all those things that kind of, but does that connect to meaning and purpose? So if we can identify activities that feel very purposeful or meaningful, that can fill up and fill you up, but also lessen the amount of the Groundhog Day experience or feeling low or anxious. Things um, like, uh, I'm trying to come up with some of the ones that maybe some, some certain clients might have. Um, some of them are drawing again, where they were, they did art in high school and they said, oh, I used to love drawing. So they brought out their paintbrushes again or their sketchbook and they are really getting into sketching and, and, and connecting to that experience of creating. Some people are doing, <laughs> I do this, so self-disclosure. So I've been doing puzzles. You already knew I love puzzles anyway, but this is a prime time for that. So the puzzles are very therapeutic because it, again, you're only focusing on that one task, find the piece where it fits, right? You're not worried about the other tasks that need to be get, get done. Um, the other thing around like reading or um, talking to old friends that you haven't spoken to, maybe you were just mentioning, I have, you know, talked to my family more in the last three weeks than I have in three years because people are more available and they have more time. So old friends that you might have not spoken to for five years and just touching base with them or, you know, whatever that is, because that feels very meaningful uh, and purposeful, um, helping others. So um, checking in with maybe neighbors, I'm going to the store, do you need anything? So just, you know what I'm saying? Kind of exchanging those things. So whatever those activities might feel like, connected to meaning and purpose. So if I asked you, Annette, and I know you have a slew of things that you do around meaning and purpose, you're an anomaly, by the way. You're like this wonder woman of, of purpose and meaning. But could you like name three things that for you each day that kind of connect with meaning and purpose for you? For me personally? Um, mm -hmm. Probably like connecting with my family for sure. Like on a, do you mean like mm -hmm. that or like actual things that I do? Like oh. I've been sending postcards because I think that that's like fun. Um, and I've been, I've been trying to help other people. Like by helping other people, it makes me feel good. So like, even though I don't know where my income's coming from or anything like that, I know that there's other friends that have, like I've shared a, a friend that's doing like postcards and stuff. And I'm like, by helping other people, I feel like that takes my anxiety away and makes me feel good. Um, mm -hmm. So I like to, whatever I can do to help other people. Exactly. Um, that's a big one. And then I just, I mean, my big focus right now is on Atticus and building that. Mm -hmm. So as long as I can get like one task, it's a daunting task. It's huge. It's like very overwhelming. Um, but if the stars didn't align and everything is how it is now, I wouldn't be here building it. Like I'd be stuck by myself going, I don't know what I'm doing. So being able to have this one month or two month, three months <laughs> break is actually beneficial, but, um, I've been trying, I, I'm, I'm on online a lot, like I'm posting a lot, but I'm trying not to browse as much, which right. kind of sounds horrible. Like, Hey, look at my stuff, but I'm not looking at yours. <laughs> no. And I think we can get lost in that. That was one of my other points is limit the amount of negativity too, especially for anxious. Right. And which a lot of times what we see, there's both negative and positive out there. Yeah. And I try to post things that are happy. Like, even when I say, don't be a dick, it's like, I mean, right. no, like, I know that happy, part. nice way. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's a pretty big picture. Um, exactly. I love yeah. it. Yeah. So I would say that those, those things have been what has kept me sane right now. Right. And I just want to highlight it just, Oh, for me, it is helping others. I do that for my career. And so now I focus on things that are purposeful, meaningful, personally, more just um, Jennifer, not mom Jennifer, not the clinician Jennifer, not the partner Jennifer, none of that. But the piece for me personally to reconnect with just, just, just Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Just Jennifer. <laughs> 
I watched an old uh, Will and Grace. I know. <laughs> I watched an old Will and Grace today. And it just, just, yeah, it was just like that. It reminded me a little bit. But to be playful with, with things um, is, is really important because the work that I do often feels heavy and, and containing a lot of heaviness. So again, to counterbalance that, a lot of playfulness, funny humor. I have noticed I will not watch anything that is like a drama, a horror film, anything that has to do with themed um, heaviness, like war movies. I just can't. I don't have the capacity anymore because I hold and contain a lot. Mm -hmm. So it has to be like slapstick, stupid, like just crazy silly stuff and that feels better to me to align with that right now to balance out how how i'm feeling um for a good part of the day and then that lightness um so that piece is meaningful to me um it's just that that quest of playfulness and joy and and everything is temporary too so we know that this moment of joy is temporary we know this moment of heaviness or anxiety is temporary and that's a really good framework to think about that even this quarantine is temporary. We just don't know how long the temporariness is. Right. So that's that piece. Have you gotten to the level of TikTok yet? <laughs> of course, I have a teenage daughter. Hello. Do I know the dances? No, I wish I did. She really wants me to try. Um, I've done a few you know, things. I like, watch people, like I go down a rabbit hole and watch people and I have a couple of friends who are on it and they're hilarious. Yeah, Emma's on there quite a lot actually. So if you come across her account, I don't know what her deal is. I, have, I don't have it on my phone, but she'll show me and Alexis has it and she shows me and sends me all kinds of stuff. It's hilarious. Yeah. So that is part of that light and fun, right? We totally will go down that rabbit hole a lot and just go, oh my gosh, this is funny. I just love it that like, there's been this transition of, like the quarantine at first was like what meals and what recipes and what are you doing and all this stuff and then it went to tiger king right right <laughs> and now it's on to tiktok and i'm right. like what's gonna happen next month <laughs> right. we're still in quarantine like Ooh, what's the next big thing that's coming up? Well, now I see the trend of um, don't share any more of your banana bread. I don't want to know about that you made banana breads. I don't know what the deal is about banana bread right now. It's hilarious to yeah. me. But as a matter of fact, when it started, I, Emma had just made banana bread because we had old bananas. I didn't want to waste them. So like, we've <laughs> we this trend about banana bread. bread. That's funny. No, 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 no. But I'm just, there's this theme, you know, don't give me a goddamn banana bread recipe. I don't want it, you know. <laughs> it was well, so funny. Like, at, at the beginning too, I was like um, saving every meme and I was putting stuff in it. Like I have a whole folder on Facebook yeah. that's just so I can go back and look at all the things. And now I'm like, oh yeah, that one's kind of funny. Right, <laughs> exactly. Actually, there's probably 500 things in it because at first it was like, ew, everything. And now right. I'm like, oh yeah, was, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that you're you're on the right track here because it becomes overwhelming. All the information we have available to us can feel overwhelming. So if we know what we're wanting to seek out, if it's that light and fun, or no, I really want to connect to maybe feeling more serious. So let me go and check out this movie or you know something like that. And really attuning to how you're feeling, right? And I think that sometimes those TikToks are provide that light and fun, or are I don't know. I don't know. It's just an interesting thing. And you're noticing how, what you're drawing. So that that's part of the intuition on how to care for yourself too, is what you think you need in the moment and really trusting that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was awesome. Um, I know that's probably like a good 45 minutes to an hour of your time. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's why I, I live my life in hour increments. <laughs> right <laughs> like and now what are you going to do for your 15 minute break are you going right. to decide let it i'm go? done i'm actually done for the day i try to keep fridays that's another strategy i try to keep fridays more um personal rather than client based but i do some client work on fridays it's more of the admin stuff that i do on fridays but not face-to-face -face client stuff so that's another thing that i did decide is strategically i work monday through thursday pretty full days and then friday and then the weekend is kind of mine and i need that time to kind of fill myself back up um but i just want to say thank you so much i love the opportunity to come and talk with you especially we've known each other for so long and we are such different places right now than we when we met and i i've already shared this with you but i am so uh inspired by all the things that you do um your spirit 
your energy, your zest to just go out and do things. And, and, and I just appreciate being asked to be part of this with you. And I just oh. thank you so much. I really <laughs> well, I'm really glad that you took the time to come on and that you said yes. And that every, I was even like, as you were talking earlier, I'm like, man, you should do a podcast yourself. Cause your voice is just so soothing. And like, I remember when I worked with you 20 years ago, I don't sh- we're not that old. <laughs> Actually, I think it was even longer. It's probably longer. <laughs> yeah. I just remember like at first I was, we don't talk about that annoying. she like tells me what to do and she like gives me advice that you know because at that age it's like you know you know there's advice and you know you're correct but you didn't want to hear it you know anyway. <laughs> and then the older and the I just I've always looked at you as such a big sister slash resource like you've just always been very therapeutic like and I think you're in the mm. very the perfect role for what you were designed for. So oh, yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate it. This is a moment for us. <laughs> I know. I just, I love, I love you to death. I just, I'm so thrilled that we stayed connected even beyond our days in retail and other things, you know, yeah. <clears throat> and we've grown so much. I just have really appreciated to see your journey and, and, and we've stayed connected and spent time over the years. And I really appreciate that. Yeah, and I look forward to out this year when my birthday came out. When my birthday came up this year, I was like, "Oh, last year I was in California with Jim." That's right. That's right. We were in Big Bear, right? Yeah. That was yeah, fun. that's so great. I love that, and I love how it's kind of spontaneous with you too. You're like, "Hey, by the way, I'm going to come out next week." Whatever. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> not what's happening right now. Like, I know. I literally I know. can't <laughs> hop in my car or get a get to anywhere. So, I know. 2021, I'm not going to be home at all. You're right. <laughs> like, I, I can like, see oh. that. I mean, I'm going to the bus. I'm going to come out there. That's amazing. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Well, Thank I you. love you dearly. And I am so grateful that you are in my life. And I am so grateful that you are the person that you are because you inspire me just as much as I inspire you I guess oh, thank you thank you and I, I would love like if there are themes that you want to talk about around mental health I, I would love to continue to have discussions or whatever whatever fits I would love to still be available so awesome yeah now that I um forced myself to learn this I'm the type of person I will procrastinate procrastinate until I need something and I was like crap I ran out of podcasts because I hadn't recorded one in two months. And I was like, I need to get podcasts. And then I was like, why am I not taking this time to talk to people about what's going on? Like as a person who was running a nonprofit, who's trying to encourage people and like talk about what's going on. I was like, I have to talk about it. Like it can't be. And it, did it take me three weeks? Yes. But I I had to process it myself to be able to, where I was like, okay, cool. Now I'm going to take you know, a couple, an hour or two or three a week to have these conversations and reunite with some really awesome people. So that's right. And so you just, just uh, demonstrate that self-compassion. You kind of had that thought, like I should have, you had a little bit of regret, like I should have done three weeks ago, but the truth is you're still figuring it out. Right. So there's that self-compassion to say, we're doing it. We got one done. We're good. Right. So I love that. That's good. And had I done it three weeks ago, I would have been like, oh my God, guys, what is happening? Right. And I would have been angry. I went through, I think I've gone through like all the stages of grief with this. Right. It was like the terrified, sad, angry. Um, now I'm in acceptance. I'm just right. like, it is what it is. I have no control over it and it's okay. driving me insane, but it is what it is. Exactly right. I love it. All right. Well, say well, hello to your you. family. Give your family a squeeze. I will. And I will talk to you very soon. Thank right. you. Thank we'll you. We'll see ya. Thanks. Right. Bye. Bye.